Welcome to What the Paper Said, in which I, Patrick Crozier, skim through the times from a hundred years ago, read some of the articles and comment on the ones I find interesting. In this episode, the week ending the 30th September 1923, German Democrats demonstrate their fanatical commitment to democratic principles by introducing martial law. But first, the headlines. As mentioned in the introduction, martial law has been declared in Germany. More on that later. There has been a mine disaster at the Reading Pit near Falkirk in Scotland. Flooding will eventually claim the lives of 40 men. Lord Morley, best known for resigning from the Cabinet rather than support British entry into the First World War, has died. I was amused to read this in a letter. This is from Monday the 24th. A country which creates robots is not a country which can develop true patriots. What amuses me is the use of the word robot. The word was coined by the Czech playwright Karol Kapek in his play R.U.R. Its first production was earlier this year. I mentioned it in the 8th of April episode. This appeared in the In Brief section on Thursday the 27th. The Bedford coroner yesterday condemned the building of steep and narrow staircases without handrails in cottages. The fact that a coroner has mentioned it does seem to suggest that someone has died as a consequence. It also suggests that the landlord thought he could rent a property with this hazard and a tenant was prepared to pay for it, which says something about both the level of wealth of our ancestors and their probably related attitude to danger. As mentioned earlier, martial law has been declared in Germany. One peculiar feature is that while most of Germany is under one martial law regime, Bavaria is under a separate one. Bavaria's effective dictator is one Gustav von Kahr. Now, spoiler alert, von Kahr has a big part to play in the Beer Hall Putsch, which, bigger spoiler alert, is coming very soon. That Germany was under martial law at the time is news to me. This is from Friday the 28th. In the fear that the extremist organisations might take rash action, the Bavarian government decided to appoint Herr von Kahr dictator in the hope that he might prove an acceptable leader to the mass of patriotic Bavarians. And who is this Herr von Kahr? This is what the editorial has to say. Herr von Kahr is a notorious reactionary monarchist whose recent career is a record of revolt against the democratic regime in Germany and the obligations under which it has laid itself. Poacher turned gamekeeper, perhaps. So why have they introduced martial law? A decree signed by President Ebert and the members of the government has been published cancelling all regulations and orders which have been passed by the government with the object of supporting the Ruhr resistance. Reading between the lines, it would appear that given a choice between resisting the Treaty of Versailles and feeding its population, the government would prefer to do the latter. They are also putting a great deal of emphasis on the claim that Britain has declared the French occupation of the Ruhr illegal, and that therefore... Well, I'm not quite sure, but they're putting a lot of emphasis on it. The editorial adds this for good measure. Any prospect of Herr Hitler playing a leading part in Bavarian politics appears to have vanished. On Monday the 24th, the Times published this. That ordinary smoking tobacco may sometimes be contaminated with Indian hemp, hashish, would seem to be proved by an instance reported by a medical man in the current issue of the British Medical Journal. This physician was called to see a young woman who had committed the foolish act of snuffing some powdered tobacco from a pouch. She became giddy and intoxicated and was evidently under the influence of a drug. The contents of the pouch were submitted to analysis. They consisted of tobacco of a well-known and popular brand of the cheaper type. They were found to contain 0.66% of solid cannabis indica, Indian hemp or hashish. This is not a large proportion, yet the fact that the hemp was present at all is disquieting, and it is clear that steps are required to prevent any such contamination in future. 
the continued smoking of even minute quantities of hashish is likely to prove exceedingly harmful. We're a bit short of facts here. Surely the whole point of powdered tobacco, correct me if I am wrong, is that you are supposed to snuff it. So how can it be foolish? Also, no one seems to have considered the possibility that the contamination may have taken place after the sale rather than beforehand. The bigger matter is the banning of cannabis. At this point in time, opium and cocaine are illegal, while cannabis is not. What is interesting is how cannabis will come to be outlawed. I suspect that articles like this will have a big part to play in that. And now for some good news. On Monday the 24th, uh, the Times had an article about tube improvements. Piccadilly Station is being rebuilt, as is Oxford Circus. Also Westminster Station. Piccadilly Station, as rebuilt, is with us to this day and is much loved by the sort of people who appreciate these things. The rebuilding of Westminster Station was less successful, and it was rebuilt again at the turn of this millennium as part of the Jubilee Line extension. The article also has this to say. The automatic ticket issuing machines set up at stations on the underground have proved successful. Well, they're not that automatic. The pressing of a button by the booking clerk causes an electrical contact to be made, which issues one or more tickets, and the same operation also dates them. Anyway, that's all for this week. I aim to have something up next week, but I promise nothing.